So now we're in chapter 13 of Genesis. We're going to cover all of 13. It's a very simple story. So, Abram left Egypt. You remember recently, last week, we were studying about Abram and his family moved to Egypt. And why they did that was because there was no food in Canaan. There was a famine. So they went to Egypt. And now they were leaving Egypt and traveling north into Negev. Do you know where Negev is located? It's in the Arabian Desert. It's this area. So they traveled from Egypt to the Arabian Desert. So along with his wife and Lot, that was Abram's nephew, nephew, I said nephew this time, not niece, nephew, because nephew, niece, similar signs, and all that they owned, everything, their wealth, they took with them. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. So if you remember, recently in Egypt, Abram, you know, the Pharaoh wanted his wife. You know, and Abram said, yeah, sure, that's my sister. But he was not telling the truth. So the Pharaoh gave him animals, livestock, servants, gave him lots of different things. So then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her, talking about Sarah. Sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. So that is a list of what Pharaoh gave Abram. So it seems that he got, oh, I'm sorry, one moment. So going back to verse one and two, silver and gold, gold. Maybe from Egypt, because Egypt was very wealthy and there was a lot of gold in Egypt, silver, it was abundant. And it seems like he got it from there as well. Maybe he traded. Or maybe some people saw Abram and that God was with him and just provided for him. We don't really know. But he became wealthier and was very blessed. So going back to the 13 from Negev, remember recently I showed you it's the Arabian Desert. They traveled north by stages towards Bethel. And they pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai. And I is located so I is here in Bethel so in between so understanding you know how long did they stay there year after year we're not really sure but we don't know how long it took for them to travel this is a very abbreviated story it looks like it would have been short but no it took them a while to travel So Lot, who was traveling with Abram, also became very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goat, 
herds of cattle and many tents. So Lot became wealthy as well. And you might wonder how he became wealthy. So it's possible that Abram, the group that they were there in Egypt, were there for a while. And Lot learned a trade and how to barter. And he knew how to do that. And then God blessed them. But it's also possible that they were there in Asia maybe about 20 years. Some people say they were there only three months. But we don't know. They could have spent years in Egypt. And Lot learned while he was there, and that's how he earned his wealth. So it appears that same way with Abram. It says here, many tents. So if a wealthy person had many tents, that means they also was an indication that they had many servants. Because the tents were there for to house the servants. You know, the tent itself indicated servants. And wealthy people tended, tended to have many tents and servants. But the land could not support both Abram and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. There just was not enough land for Abram's animals and all of their servants and Lot's animals and servants. You know, it seemed to be a conflict. And so it happened that there was disputes that broke out between the herdsmen, the men who worked with the animals, and that was both the herdsmen between Abram and Lot. You know, maybe the food source had been eaten up, they'd have to move a little bit and keep moving, and so it was too much confusion. So it's interesting here, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land. So why is this mentioned here? Why did we mention the Canaanites and the Perizzites? At that time, both of these groups were very evil people. They lived in sin. The Canaanites were in a certain area, and the Perizzites were, might be just right outside of Canaan, and they were under Egyptian rule. At that time, Jerusalem, and I'll show you a picture of that, that area, the Dead Sea, that was controlled by Israel. I mean, I'm sorry, by Egypt and did not include Canaan, but maybe those that were outside were watching Abram and saw how blessed he was. And they knew that Abram's God, and they were watching, and they saw Abram and Lot begin to argue they got excited about that because it became easier to come in and take over. And that's not good, right? It's the same like us. If we're Christians and we have conflict between ourselves, that's not good. We should be unified. We should support each other. The world watches. When we argue and have conflict and are negative and criticize, that's not good. The Christ, non-Christians are not are watching us. It's not a good example. So criticizing, negativity, 
you know, to make other Christians look bad is not a good thing. So that's kind of the idea that happened between Abram and Lot. So finally, Abram said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen, which were the men who worked to take care of the animals. Let's not have conflict. After all, we are close relatives. And Abram was right. <coughs> And it's like easy for us to look at other Christians maybe as an enemy, but they're our family members, right? We are all in God's family. So we have to be careful about thinking before we speak and try not to cause division because we are all in God's family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, right? So we need to be mindful and watch what you say, things that might hurt people or cause division. And Abram noticed that with his relationship with Lot. He wanted to solve the problem. It says, the whole countryside is open to you. Talking to Abram, or Abram saying this, Take your choice of any section, part of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want, Abraham said, if you want the land on the left, I will take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I will go to the left. So I'm curious. What does, what do you think about what Abram stated by giving Lot the choice? What does that represent in Abram's life? That Abram let Lot pick which, the left or the right, so that he could see the better land and the water and the trees and maybe the other one did not. So he picked one. But what was it that it showed about Abram? It showed his heart was tender and that he loved and cherished and wanted peace. Like he did not care. He was not being selfish. So let Lot choose first what he wanted. So Abram had faith in God. That's what it shows that he was sovereign, that God was sovereign, and Abram knew that. And that's the reason why he let Lot choose. And Abram was willing for him to do that, and he would take the opposite. He knew that God was still leading Abram to a land that would be his. He had faith. He didn't want contention. You know, for example, some men who want to become pastors, you know, they kind of, you know, try to get support. But, you know, instead of just letting the Lord lead, lead and God use people, if God wants that person to become a pastor or not, that's God's choosing. So the Lord, Lord takes care. You know, that's man's way. So we must trust in God and what the situation that God will take care of. So that's the reason why he let Lot choose. And he just let it go. You know. So God will take care. And that happened to me before. I learned to have to let go, and the Lord would lead me in the right direction. And Abram was the same. He trusted. He let Lot decide what he wanted. He didn't want to be in conflict or miserable about it. He let Lot choose and let God take care. So Lot picked 
and then there were consequences. So Lot took a long look at the fertile land. Had water, good growing of the Jordan Valley in the direction towards Zor. So on this map, Zor is located south of the Dead Sea area. And it appears that Lot, I don't know specifically, just a general idea, it seemed to be this area that Lot chose. And Abram took the other half, and that the Jordan Valley, that's the Jordan Valley? There's mountains around, and then there's a valley where this river, the Jordan River, runs through. It seems that Lot looked and saw the fertile land and the water that was supplied and took that. So Lot took a long look at the fertile plains and the whole area was well watered everywhere. Kind of like the garden of the Lord. Remember Adam and Eve, the garden had rivers that ran through it. It's the same concept like the garden of the Lord and the beautiful land of Egypt. The Jordan River or the Nile River. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's the area that Lot took. But specifically, exactly where that was and where Sodom and Gomorrah were, you know, landscape changes, so we're not quite sure exactly where that was. So Lot, when he looked, he was like, oh, I see all these things over on this side that I would like. So it's same as Eve. You know, she looked at the fruit and saw how beautiful that fruit was and wanted that fruit. It's the same as Lot. He got very selfish. Abraham's going to let me choose? Oh, okay. You know, so he picked an Abram got the land that was not so good in Cana area it seems remember there was one side versus the other side so Lot was looking at the worldly things and what the world could offer the water the fertile land all these different things that the area had so that's kind of what Lot was doing. In 1 John 2, 15 and 16, you know, I warn you, this is like us too. We're like Lot. It says, do not love this world or the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical beauty and pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and our possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. <clears throat> so that was Lot. He got... <coughs> pulled in to what the world had to offer him and he thought how perfect this would be for him you know got very prideful and Abraham just told him to choose and Abram was going to depend on what God had offered him already and promised him so this was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah so you might be thinking where Sodom and Gomorrah might be located. 
They believe it's in the north northern area of the Dead Sea. So, but no one really knows exactly where. So at that time of Sodom and Gomorrah, the name of the towns, it was they were horribly sinful. And what was their sin? It was very much involved in sexual sins. So it has here in this scripture, you know, it's God let Abraham know that Sodom and Gomorrah, this is later on in Genesis, so the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry, not from the people, just it being festered with sin. It was an outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. So exactly what was it at that time? So Ezekiel 16.49 says, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness while the poor and the needy suffered outside her door. You know, they enjoyed their wealth, their food, they didn't care about any other people. They left the poor without help. So when we'll go to chapter 18 later. It'll talk more about Genesis, and we'll talk about it and discuss it more. So back to chapter 13. Anybody have any discussion? or Everybody's okay? No questions? So it says, Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. Remember, recently it talked about, remember I was telling you the east side in the map? He went there with his flocks, servants, and parted company with his uncle Abram. So the family and their animals split up. So Abram <coughs> settled in the land of Canaan and Lot moved his tents to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against the Lord. So it seems that Lot and Abraham both knew that these this area was horrible or extremely wicked. They didn't care about their sins. But it's the same as today. You know, sometimes as Christians, you know, we need to live a holy life and obey the Lord, do the right things, and not fellowship or mingle with non-believers who are in sin. But some Christians, we go to church, you know, they don't care necessarily. It's just like Lot. He went ahead and fellowshiped with who he wanted or mingled with whoever he wanted. And so Lot, I mean, Abraham let him choose. So Abram ended up with Cana, the desert area, like there was no water. Almost seems kind of depressing, right? And there's nothing there. That's what it looks like. But Abram knew that God would take care of him. He looked to God for leading. God promised the land would be yours. So after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction. Just every direction. And you can see the vastness. 
so the north, the south, the east, and the west, and I'm giving all of this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. So as a permanent possession, talking about all of the descendants, 400 years, remember the Jews were in Egypt as slaves, and then they had exodus out of Egypt with Moses, and they conquered the land of Canaan, and that was God's promise that he would give it, and Abram believed, but even though he didn't see it, he died before it happened but he knew that God had promised that he would give it. <clears throat> and I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth, you know, dust is everywhere, right? You know, another scripture verse says many sands, like pieces of sand that many descendants so does that mean only the jews israel no it's talking about the world globally we're all believers we are his descendants we are abram's people spiritually speaking and that's what god promised that there would be many descendants through jesus christ and that we as believers who believe in Jesus, we are in God's family. So we are also included in Abram's family. They cannot be counted. So go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. And that's really a comfort. Abram, maybe in the back of his mind, you know, when Lot picked the area, you know, that was nice and fertile and with water, he might have been somewhat disappointed, but, you know, he trusted. God gave him a comfort and promised him that he would get all this land and that it would be his. Again and again, God reminded Abram. Now, Abram never did see it happen. It happened much later. And the Jewish people of Israel conquered the land into the promised land. And Abram did not see it, but he <coughs> believed what God had promised. Just the same as us. We don't see it. Sometimes, you know, we might be a little depressed or in despair, wondering if God is working in our lives or leading us. And we're following the right way, but we just have to trust, even though we may not see. You know, we don't have faith by sight, right? But we have faith in his promises. In Hebrews chapter 11, faith, when we have faith, it shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. The evidence is there. We know it's there, but we don't see it. Things that we don't see, like eternal things, you know, and things here on the earth are temporary. So God's promises we don't see are eternal. They are really there. And through their faith, talking about Abram, the people of the days of old earned a good reputation because they are named for their faith. And going forward, it really did happen. The promised land, you know, Abram's name, Abraham's name became famous. And God kept his promise to Abraham. There's more scripture that clarifies those word faith. It says now faith is the NET Bible. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. 
we know that it's true. We know that it will be there. For being convinced of what conviction is another word instead of convinced of what we do not see. Okay, so it's kind of like if you have money in the bank, right? You have money in the bank, right? Do you walk into the big vault and go look for your money? Oh, there's my money. That has my name on it. There's my name on it. You see that? How much money is that? Okay, that's how much money is over there. Right? You don't see your money in the account, right? You know, they look up your name. Whatever you have, that's your account balance. You know, you earn interest. Right. But you don't see, you trust that the bank has your money, right? It's the same idea that, you know, you hope that you have money. You sit there, when you put your card in the ATM, it says it's wrong. No. It's not like I hope and I cross my fingers. You know, you know that you have money there, right? But if you're not careful, you know, trying to make sure that you watch your balance, you might bounce a check or bounce or not have any money, but it's all about God's revelation. You know what the Bible teaches. You know what God shows in his word. It's there. We know it. We don't have to see it with our eyes. We just know that it's there. That's faith. And it is evidence, even though you don't see it. But how do you know? I just know. That's how you, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals it to you and helps you to know. It's the same thing. You know it's there. You trust in God. Lot, he had no faith. He was focused on what he was seeing with his eyes. And you see the difference? So even though Abraham and Lot both were righteous, Abram was victorious, and Lot was a defeated Christian and was deceived by the world's influence Lot was but not Abram the scripture before it's like lust envy of the worldly things and how that influences you so Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove, talking about the trees. Belonging to memory. I think it's, some people think it's a town, and some people think it's a district in Hebron. You know, which it was, we're not sure. A town or a district. but it's in Hebron. So regardless, he settled, he settled there and he built another altar to the Lord. So why did he build an altar to the Lord? Because he wanted to worship and thank the Lord for his leading. You know, we don't know what it's like, but faith, God gives the land he will reward with descendants <coughs> Abram trust regardless even though he was old and his wife was aging as well he still trusted and persevered even though he didn't see he knew it was all dry land as far as he could see what it was going to look like he didn't know it's the same as us 
Abraham was satisfied. He was content. He knew that God was with him, and that was the important thing. So he built another altar to worship and thank God for being with him. So where is Hebron? You know, here's the Dead Sea. And the Valley of Jordan, or the Jordan Valley. And Abram moved to Hebron. Lot probably moved to the east, and this general area is Canaan. So why did the Lord say, look, everywhere, every direction, all around you for the land? Why did God say that? I think I saw a map. There might have been... You mean recently? I thought I saw, but there's no mountains. There's your mountain. <laughs> so you're talking about this one. Hebron would probably have been in this location. Somewhere around there. You know, all the green is the valley, right? And so he was a higher elevation. Yeah, but Lot was focused in on the valley. You know, but God was to give Abraham so much more. The left and the right. It says, Abraham, look, talking about this whole area, really. God gave Abram, Abraham all of Canaan. So let's close in prayer. Father, we're so grateful, Lord, for this story. So simple, but we're thankful that it helps us remember that our lives here on earth, that we need to keep our eyes on our better, a better country, talking about heaven and how we do not belong here. So help remind us that we are belong to you and we are in your family. That we are not involved in the world and in the worldly things. That we need to learn to be content and satisfied with what you give us and know that the promises that you've given us and the blessings is our eternal home with you where there is no sin and we will live with Jesus forever. That is our hope. So help us remember when we get sidetracked and we start to want things of the world, help us to remember how cheap the things of the world are and what you offer is so much richer. And that Jesus purchased that for us. In Jesus' name, amen.